In this video, we're going to talk about 7.6, the processing array elements. We have a seven programming labs, and before we take the reps, I'm going to give some basic skills to manage the array elements with a couple of examples. Here is the couple of basic examples to manage array management, such as printing and summation and calculating the average. I'm going to show these examples in VS Code. Let's make a code to print out the entire elements in array. We are making 10 elements array, and then first I'm going to use the regular for loop to print out. And then I'm going, I'm going to do again with the range-based for loop. And let's compile and run this program. Here is the result of code segments. And now I'm going to make a code for summation of all elements in array. In line 12, at every iteration, the index will be changed from 0 to 9. Hence, all the elements can be accessed step by step in this iteration. Now let's make some change to this code to have the summation with the even index and all the index. We need two more variables to store the even sum and all the sum. The algorithm is too straightforward. Inside the loop, the checked index is even or odd with the modular operator. If the index is even, we're going to add the number to the even sum, otherwise add it to the odd sum. Let's move to the next slide. The next is finding minimum and maximum value in array. Let's make the program in VS Code. Before the starting loop, the min and max variable should be initialized the first elements in array. Inside the loop, if we find the less value than current minimum, we need to reassign the min value as the current value. And similarly, if we find greater value than the current max value, we will assign the current value to the max variable. And let's compile run this program, and here is the result of this program. Here is one more requirement. Find the min and max value with the index number together. Can you get the index number when we use the range-based for loop? The answer is no. So we need to use the regular for loop to find the min value and also its index number. So I will declare two more variables for the index. Two variables are initialized as 0 for the first index. And when we change the min value, we also change the index. And also the range-based for loop should be transformed to the original for loop structures. And now we can find the min and max value with the index number. And here is the result of this program. Now let's move to the next topic, the partially filled arrays. The partially filled arrays happens when you declare the larger size than actual number of elements that you use. Because sometimes we don't know the number of items to store in an array, the exact size of array can be determined in the runtime. So when we don't know the number of items to store, the one solution is to make the array large enough to hold the largest possible number of items. So in this case, the actual number of items stored in array is less than the number of elements in declaration. So we call this array is partially filled arrays. Let's take a look at this example. This array declared with size 10, but we use only three items. And now I'm going to make the code for summation of this array. So let's think of this code. This code has the iteration with declaration size. How do you think this code? Obviously, we need to fix it as the correct size of elements. I have a quick question. Who has the value of exact number of actual elements? So this is the one thing we have to be careful when we use the partially filled array. 
So now let's take a look at an example in this slide. In this example, we declared the array with the size 100. And then inside of a while loop, we take the usual input. So we cannot expect the exact size of usual elements. But we use the special purpose variable. The name is the input count. After the while loop, this variable has the actual number of usual values in array. If we use the range-based for loop to print out the array, the 100 elements will be displayed even though we use just part of the array. Hence, we should use the exact size of array to manage the array elements. So we need one particular variable to keep the actual size of array. So the keeping the actual size of array is the key point of the partial field array. Now let's move to the next topic. So next topic is the comparing arrays. Can we compare the array directly with the array name? Do you think such a code is possible? The answer is no. We cannot use the assignment and comparison between arrays each other directly. So in this example, we declare two initial arrays and then try to assign and then compare two arrays. But this statement doesn't work as you want. The first statement causes a compile error, but second statement may not. However, the second statement does not mean the comparison actual elements of two arrays. Actually, this statement compares the starting memory address of two arrays, not the comparison of two arrays. So now let's make a code to compare two arrays. So this program is to find the contents of two arrays are same or not. So if two arrays are different, what is the first index that elements are not same? First, we are going to declare two arrays and then I will make some difference at the position index 5. During the full iteration, we declare the size 10. I'm going to compare two elements one by one. If I detect two elements are not the same, I'm going to break out the loop. At that moment, when we are out of loop, if the index is 10, it means we finished the full iteration. It says that two arrays are same. If the index is less than 10, it means that two arrays are different. And also, the first different index value has the variable i. So when we run this program, so we can find the result as like that. And also we can make more programming challenges, for example, the program to compare two arrays and then find the number of different elements, or the program to find the subset of another program. So now let's go back to the main topic 